Hi designers, welcome to SolidWorks Central. Today, we're creating a realistic honeycomb curved surface. Bold, detailed and built for real world use. We'll walk through powerful tools like Revolved Surface, Mirror, Thicken, Swept Boss Base, Filet, Revolved Boss Base, Extruded Cut, Fill Pattern, Offset Surface and Combine, step by step. And to top it off, we'll customize materials and appearances for a professional, polished look. Before we start, in our previous Honeycomb Mesh Grill video, some viewers experienced an issue with the fill pattern feature. I'll quickly show you the solution here before we continue, so everyone who had that problem can finally fix it. Edit the fill pattern feature. Click OK to confirm the pattern. This process might take a little time because of the complex surface geometry. As you can see, this causes some issues and unexpected errors in the pattern. To fix this, let's edit the Fill Pattern feature once again. Scroll down to the Feature Scope section. Disable the Auto Select option to manually define which body the pattern should affect. In the Selected Bodies box, Choose the hidden body named Extruded Thin One from the Solid Bodies folder in the Feature tree. We do this so the pattern only applies to the correct solid body instead of the entire model. If you want, you can modify or adjust any parameters, but I'll leave mine as they are. Then click OK to confirm. And there we go. The issue is solved. It turns out that a small checkbox caused the problem, but now we've fixed it together. Now we can move on to our main model. Let's dive in. First, open a sketch on the front plane. Select the Line tool. Draw vertical and horizontal lines that intersect at the origin. Now, select the three-point arc tool. Create an arc between the endpoints of the two lines. Apply a make vertical relation between the center point of the arc and the origin. Select the smart dimension tool. Enter 65 millimeters for the horizontal line length. Set the arc radius to 100 millimeters. That's all for this sketch for now. Let's exit the sketch. Open a new sketch on the front plane. Select the arc. Use the Convert Entities tool to project the arc onto this new sketch. Grab the upper end point of the converted arc and drag it downward. This way, we can control the height of the arc easily. Select the Centerline tool. Draw a vertical centerline starting from the origin. Now select the Smart Dimension tool. Set the vertical height of the arc to 2 mm. Set the center line length to 22 mm. Select the Style Spline tool. Make sure the spline type is set to Bezier. A Bezier spline allows you to control the curve shape smoothly using handles. Add a tangent relation between the arc and the spline. Then apply a horizontal relation to the upper control handle of the spline. From the Surface tab, activate the Revolved Surface command. Press Ctrl plus 7 to switch to the isometric view. Click OK to confirm the revolved surface. Now, mirror the surface we just created by revolving. From the Features tab, activate the Mirror command. Under Mirror Face or Plane, select the top plane from the Feature tree. Next, open the Bodies to Mirror section and select the surface body we want to mirror. Check the boxes for Merge Solids and Knit Surface to join both surfaces together. Click OK to confirm. 
switch to section view and take a look at it. As we can see, it's still a single surface with no thickness. Now give this body some thickness. Activate the thicken command. Set the thickness value to 3 mm. Under surface to thicken, select the surface body we want to apply the thickness to. Since we want to thicken it inward, make sure the inside direction is selected. Click OK to confirm. And now we've added thickness to the body. We can close the section view. Now activate the Swept Boss Base command. Select the Circular Profile option. Set the diameter value to 6.5 mm. Select the outer edge as the path. Right click to confirm the command. Activate the Fillet command. Set the fillet radius to 2 mm. Under Profile, choose Curvature Continuous. Curvature Continuous keeps a smooth, seamless transition between connected faces. Now, select the outer face of the sweep body. Right-click to confirm. Hide the body we created. In the Feature tree, click on the last created feature and choose Hide. Now, activate the Revolved Boss Base command. Select this line as the axis of revolution. Click OK to confirm. Next, open a new sketch on the top plane. Select the Polygon tool. Draw the polygon with its center placed at the origin. Select the Smart Dimension tool. Set the inscribed circle diameter to 5 mm. Align the top edge of the polygon horizontally. Now, select the Sketch Fillet tool. Set the fillet radius to 1 mm. Apply the fillet to all corners of the polygon. Right-click to confirm. Activate the Extruded Cut command. Reverse the cut direction so it extrudes upward instead of downward. Set the end condition to through all. Click OK. Under the Linear Pattern drop-down, activate the Fill Pattern command. In the Fill Boundary box, select the Circular Planar Face as the Fill Boundary. In the Features box, select the last cut feature. Cut Extrude 1 from the Feature tree. Now we're back to the same setting we talked about earlier. Uncheck the Auto Select option in the Feature Scope section. Disable the Auto Select option to manually define which body the pattern should affect. After disabling Auto Select, specify the body where this fill pattern will be applied. Set the Stagger Angle value to 30 degrees. Set the Instant Spacing value to 6 mm. Click OK to confirm the fill pattern. This process might take a few minutes to complete, so please be patient. Go to the Surface tab and select the Offset Surface command. Use the Offset Surface command with 0 mm to generate a copy of the face. Click OK to confirm. To continue working on the copied surface, let's hide this body as well. Activate the Thicken command. Select the copied surface and apply a 3 mm thickness directed inward. Click OK to confirm. This process might take some time due to the complex surface geometry. Press Ctrl plus B to rebuild the model. 
Rebuild helps refresh and recalculate all features, especially useful if the model becomes heavy or starts lagging. Open a new sketch on the front plane. Select the Rectangle tool. Apply a Make Midpoint Relation between the top edge of the rectangle and the origin. Make sure the rectangle extends beyond the part. The exact size isn't critical here. Now, activate the Extruded Cut command. Set the end condition to through all both. Click OK to confirm the cut. Use the mirror command again and select the top plane as the mirror plane. Enable the Merge Solids checkbox to combine both bodies. Click OK to confirm the mirror operation. If you experience any lag or slow response when moving the model, press Ctrl plus B to rebuild and wait for it to stabilise. Make the first hidden body visible again. That's the one named Filler 1. You can unhide it directly from the Feature tree or expand the Solid Bodies folder and unhide Filler 1 from there. Use the Combine command to join both bodies into a single solid. Go to the Direct Editing tab and activate the Combine command. Select both bodies together as the objects to be combined. Click OK. Our model is now complete. Let's move on to the scene setup and then apply materials and visual enhancements to finalise the look. And that's how we've completed our honeycomb curved surface model in SOLIDWORKS. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and enjoyable. If you did, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to SOLIDWORKS Central for more step-by-step -step SOLIDWORKS projects. If you have any questions, video ideas or feedback, feel free to leave a comment below. Your thoughts and suggestions really mean a lot to me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.